Hi, Astro people. So now we have the techniques of spherical trigonometry. Let's use them now to find the transformation between the coordinate systems. The use of a coordinate system depends on the problem to be solved, right? You can use, say, the equatorial coordinates to give the coordinates of a star, but you may want to e use either the horizontal or the hour system to point your observational instrument. You may use ecliptic coordinates to study the movements in, of objects in the solar system and galactic coordinates for the dynamics of objects within the galaxy. There are other coordinate systems, but these are the five most used ones. So to solve uh, these various types of astronomical problems, we need to find formulas that allow for the transformation between the coordinate systems. So we're going to use the Gauss group formulas uh, to derive these transformations. Let's first look at how to transform between the horizontal and our coordinate system, for instance. So to transform between two coordinate systems, all you need to do is write the coordinates uh, on a particular object, say a star, draw a spherical triangle, and apply the formula of spherical trigonometry to that triangle. In this case, what do we have? Let's say a star here, and let's write their coordinates, both in our coordinates and horizontal coordinates. So in our coordinates, you have that the hour angle is from the meridian to the hour circle of the star. For the hour circle of the star, you get from the star to the north celestial pole, trace a great circle where it cuts the celestial equator. It's the point from the meridian where you get the hour angle and the declination from the celestial equator to the star. Now, the horizontal coordinates you get from the south point to the great circle from the zenith to, to the star crossing the horizon, that's the azimuth. And then from the horizon to the star, you have the altitude. You end up then with a spherical triangle that is drawn here between the north celestial pole, the star, and the zenith. Let's look at the elements of this triangle. The elements of this triangle are the arc from the pole to the star is this one here, from the pole to the star. If this is the declination, then this is 90 minus the declination. If this is the zenith and this is the star, then this arc is the zenithal distance, which is 90 minus the altitude. Here, from the pole to the zenith is 90 minus the latitude of the place. Remember, from the north point to the north celestial pole, that's the latitude. From the pole to the zenith, then is 90 minus the latitude. So this is our triangle here, the zenith, the pole, and the star. All the elements are the angles. So we have that this angle here is 100 minus A, A is azimuth. You can see it clearly because this from the south point to this point, that's the azimuth. And then this then to the north from this point here, the projection of the star to the north point, it's 180 minus A. Therefore, this side, is equal to this angle here, which is 180 minus A. In the same token, if this is the hour angle, this is also the hour angle. So let's now solve the trigonometry for this. You have that the side A, side little a, is Z. The side little b is 90 minus pi. And the side little c is 90 minus delta. And you know the angles. A is equal to the hour angle, and C is equal to 180 minus A. Oh, bad notation here, I'm sorry. This is just the A for angle, but this A here is the azimuth. So just for the sake of not confusing us with notation, let's call this A prime, just so it's clear that this is not the same as this. So consider that you know the horizontal coordinates. They're Z and A. You know the latitude. And you want to determine the hour coordinates, delta and uh, H, the declination and the hour angle. So if you apply the fundamental law of cosines 
cosine C is equal to cosine B cosine A plus sine A sine B sine big A prime. That becomes cosine of 90 minus delta is equal to cosine of 90 minus H times cosine of 90 minus phi plus sine of 90 minus H sine of 90 minus phi cosine of 180 minus A. Here, 90 minus H is equal to Z. So if you solve for the 90 minus, you find that sine delta is equal to sine H sine phi minus cosine H cosine phi cosine big A. So that's the first formula to convert between our coordinates and horizontal coordinates. This give you the declination. Now let's apply the law of sines. You have two angles and two sides. Apply the law of sines to it. Sine of big A prime in this case over sine a little a is equal to the sine of big C over sine of C. Apply to what we have here. A prime is equal to H and big C is equal to 180 minus A. So this becomes sine of H over sine Z is equal to sine of 180 minus A over sine of 90 minus delta. Again, solving for the 90s and substituting Z equal to 90 minus H, you have that sine of the hour angle is equal to cosine H sine A over cosine of delta. So we have the delta and the hour coordinate, the declination and the hour coordinate. We would be done, except that uh, there is an ambiguity for the hour angle. The declination is fine. You only need the sine because the declination varies from minus 90 to 90. However, the hour angle varies from zero to 24 hours, from zero to 360 degrees. So the value of sine alone does not define what the hour angle is. You must have the cosine of the hour angle to decide what is the quadrant that the hour angle is when you find the sine. So for that one, let's apply the arc and angle formula. We have that sine a little c times cosine of big A is equal to sine of B sine cosine uh, <clears throat> sine B cosine A minus cosine B sine A cosine of big C. Apply that to the uh, triangle that we have, and this becomes sine 90 minus delta cosine H is equal to cosine of 90 minus H sine 90 minus phi minus sine of 90 minus h cosine of 90 minus phi times cosine of 180 minus a. So this leads to cosine h cosine delta is equal to sine h cosine phi plus cosine h sine phi cosine big A. That's the third formula. And this solves the quadrant ambiguity. So these three equations, they solve the problem, allowing you to obtain the hour coordinates from the horizontal coordinates. Now you can apply the same group of formulae for the triangle. And if we now apply for uh, the side of the zenithal distance, and for the angle of the azimuth, we find the corresponding formula to pass from horizontal to our coordinates. So they come from the same place. This is applying the fundamental law of cosines. This is applying the law of sines. And the third one is applying the arc and angle formula. So the problem is solved. We can use this one to pass from horizontal to our coordinates, and we can use these ones to pass from our to horizontal coordinates.